received a cable through uh, international programs which came from the ambassador in Vienna. Uh, and we just want to alert you to this, not that you need to do anything with the information, but to make sure that you have awareness of it. It says... that summarizes the current perspective of the International Atomic Energy Agency with respect to the situation of nuclear power plants in Japan. The IAEA tells us the earthquake triggered a power failure at the Fukushima Daiichi Unit 2 nuclear power plant. And then when a backup generator also failed, the cooling system was unable to supply water to cool the reactor. Specialists at the IAEA understand the fuel core is still covered by question if it will remain so. No, we do not have any information on that. Uh, and also talked about the fact that there had been actuation of the emergency core cooling system uh, to high uh, containment pressure. We're not aware of that. The threat is really not to a U.S. facility, but it's something where we as an agency are responding. Basically that, uh, you know, first of all the plants, um, three of the plants are, you know, without loss of off-site power, haven't been able to store uh, any AC power. Um, they, their simulator run, they predicted after three hours that unit one would be about two and a half to three PSIG. After three hours, instead, they were at about 80 pounds in the containment, uh, which indicates to them and us that there's some sort of leak. That we, we checked the IMES scale, and uh, they're at least at level three, which is a serious incident. And, and I think I told you that uh, the reason the diesel failed is that the, all the, the diesel tanks were all above, the fuel tanks were all above ground, and the tsunami ripped the fuel tanks off, the, off their foundation. GE said, uh, GE has like 70 people on site, uh, but they're now off site because they were under manage. Turns out that military flights, but I guess all commercial flights in and out. So I think Mark is going to. Okay, we, we, we need to get somebody on the team. Okay, we don't have anyone we can get on an earlier team. And run down our reaction safety team members. We have a whole roster. Do the yeah. call, you know. You can have an hour and get somebody on it. Less than an hour, 45 minutes. But there is a commercial flight tomorrow. But he would have to get on the plane. Well, you're holding it for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I think. I think we can't wait for Okay, let's, let's do what we need to do to notify people that we are working to get somebody on that plane and we'll see what we can do. Control rods rose into the reactor to stop the nuclear fission. As planned, the reactor stopped operating. <laughs> Professor Akira Omoto of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission was involved in construction of the Fukushima plants. He thinks the cooling water somehow leaked from the reactor. The reactor's coolants must have leaked somewhere in the building. We thought we had taken adequate precautions for a tsunami, but what happened was beyond our expectations. The Chief Cabinet Secretary Edano says that uh, there should be electric power in order to cool the nuclear power plants, and there is a need for power generation there. And uh, because uh, the nuclear power plants may have a big impact, we issued an emergency state um, announcement and uh, we took uh, measures under the law to take measures, maximum measures, to secure safety of the power plant.
for them. Wednesday, March 28, 1979, began like any other day. They didn't yet know that events leading to the worst nuclear accident in American history had already been set in motion. There was such an avalanche of alarms that the operators couldn't really address any of those on a real-time basis. They were just catching up and trying to, trying to prioritize and handle the most important ones and do what they could. There was so much data being dumped to the computer and the process was so slow in, in getting it analyzed and printed out that when they'd go to look for data from their computer printout, it wasn't there until an hour and a half later. By early morning, the exposed part of the core was beginning to cook. Temperatures in the reactor were already reaching 4,300 degrees. At 5,200 degrees, meltdown. A scenario called the China Syndrome. The core could have turned into a molten white-hot mass, it could have gone through the concrete base of the plant and into groundwater, which is immediately below the foundation of the plant, could have fractured the earth instantly in all directions, and geysers of radioactive steam would have spouted uh, into the air uh, through the parking lots. continue to loop those individuals in with any of our communications um, and also that we're also make sure that we're thinking about spent fuel pools as well okay and uh, again we're uh, or, uh, where do you think we are in terms of getting now an assessment that includes an unvented or a, 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 an open okay. containment we, we have an assessment that, that is 100% uh, core melt in an open containment, and that, that's, a, as you would imagine, a very bad scenario with, uh, with uh, reaching the protective action guidelines out to 50 miles downwind. Okay. Okay. No, I don't. No, I, I think we can say, based on the the, uh, the the worst case assessment we had, I think we can say basically that there would not be any protective action recommendations for those areas. I think you know, thinking back to 1986. Hi, Marty. Uh, one question I just wanted to follow up before I go over the or I'm on my way right now, but before I get into the White House, is uh, what is the status of the? Um, the scenario that we were running. Did we complete that, that work? Um, I had asked when I came in this morning, and we had run some scenarios, and we were showing that it, it depends on your assumptions, of course. But if you assume a, a severely damaged core, you could go well. You could go beyond the pack at 50 miles. Okay. Uh, Brian, this is Dave. Uh, any information coming out from uh, Unit One relative to the uh, spent fuel pool, given that there was an uh, explosion in the reactor building? Uh, no, we've not seen anything on that, Dave. We, we had some unconformed reports of, of uh, facts. Anything else at this point? No, I can't think of anything. How are you feeling in terms of what our public communication is at this point? Which we could do, we should be doing more, I think. At the Fukushima plant, they're working non-stop to try to cool the reactors after the systems in six of them failed. At one point, the radiation released exceeded legal safety limits. It wasn't a threat to human health, the government said, but many don't believe that. On Saturday, there was an explosion here. Now they're warning there could be another after efforts to cool the number three reactor at the plant went wrong. Hundreds of thousands of people have been ordered to leave the area, but so far, tests have picked up radiation traces on just a handful of them. As for those nine people who tested positive, their clothing and skin are contaminated. It is necessary to remove the contamination. 
Also, it's necessary to do the health checks of those people to see if they were exposed to radiation internally. We have a report from specialists that if the contamination only stays on the surface of clothing and skin, there will be no health threat. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Yano said at the news conference. By in introducing water into the reactor, uh, the reactor uh, has now entered a stage where it is being cooled. If uh, this uh, water injection were to continue, uh, then it is believed that uh, cooling will proceed, meaning that the situation will stabilize. Edano said the possibility of a large-scale explosion at the number two reactor is very low because the reactor building has a vent for hydrogen generated inside. He said the government will closely monitor the, the amount of radiation nearby. I have followed the news of the Japanese earthquake and tsunami very closely and with great sadness. Many hundreds of people have been killed, many tens of thousands are missing, and many thousands more have been left homeless. My heart goes out to the people of my home country as they rise to the challenge of this immense tragedy. Japan has many nuclear power plants, and most of these are either unaffected or have shut down safely, showing the effectiveness of the safety measures. But there is continuing concern at Fukushima Daiichi. As you know, there has been an explosion at the Unit 1 reactor of Fukushima Daiichi, but the IAEA was informed by the Japanese authorities that the explosion occurred outside the primary containment vessel at Unit 1, and the integrity of that vessel is confirmed. To forcibly cool the reactor, seawater had to be pumped into it and the containment vessel. Where? This footage inside the building was taken during a regular inspection. The nuclear reactor is housed behind this robust wall. This is what a nuclear reactor looks like. The uranium inside the fuel rod inside the reactor undergoes nuclear fission. The rods emit heat, generating energy. Usually water cools them to maintain their temperature at 270 degrees Celsius. But if the cooling fails, the temperature could rise to over 1,200 degrees. This temperature is hot enough to melt the fuel rods. When the earthquake hit, the first safety system to prevent a meltdown was activated. Control rods rose into the reactor to stop the nuclear fission. As planned, the reactor stopped operating. But the fuel rods were still hot. Water should have been circulated to cool them down. However, this didn't happen because of a power outage right after the quake. So the second safety system turned on. The emergency diesel power generator began spraying the rods with coolant. But an hour later, something unexpected happened. Without warning, the emergency generator stopped. Around this time, the tsunami, possibly as high as 10 meters, hit the power plant. Experts think this is what caused the generator to fail. Now, the third safety system started operating. It converts steam traveling through the pipes into water. It cools the rods, but the water level went down and the temperature continued to rise. All three safety measures had failed. Similar failures and a huge explosion also hit another reactor at the plant on Monday. Once again, nature has challenged man's best efforts. <laughs> 